Greetings. My name is Darkwit. I have been a hypnotist for almost 15 years, and I welcome you to my study. I understand it's been a very long time since we last spoke. If this is your first time, welcome. Life has a tendency to get the better of me from time to time. So to make it up to you, I'd like to do something a little special. We're going to be working on something called visualization. Now, what I mean by visualization is not trying to believe in yourself or go out there and attain those goals. It's about recontextualizing the reality around you. Now, I'm going to warn you, this might not be for everybody. Not because it's like uncomfortable or anything like that, but merely because it's difficult to pull off. It takes a lot of practice with people that I do private sessions for. But for those of you that are particularly receptive, this session is for you. Now then, take a moment to lie back. Slowly inhale and exhale. Allow yourself to let go and relax. We have nothing we need to worry about right now. Merely that we're going to slip away for a little while and make it easy for us to slide into trance. To begin, inhale through the nose. One, two, three. And exhale through the mouth. One, two, three. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Very good. As you continue to do this, it becomes easier and easier to just relax. To just focus on the feeling of peaks and valleys. It ebbs and flows, like that of a tide on a beach, or a lunar cycle, or even the rhythmic thumping of your heart. That as it inexorably moves towards a more relaxed state, it slows, because it doesn't need to pump as much blood into your fingertips and toes and arms and legs and even the chest allowing us to take a moment to pause and acknowledge the world slowly moving around us. Very good. Just like that, we're going to be making our way deeper into your trance state. I want you to imagine for a moment that as you inhale and exhale, each time the light starts to form, the light growing brighter and dimmer. As you inhale, it grows slowly brighter. And as you exhale, the light dims again like the ebb and flow of a tide. Inhale. Exhale. Very good, very good. As we continue to breathe, I want you to quietly acknowledge all of the distractions in the room. Acknowledge that each of them are not relevant right now. And you can tune them out. Remember, it's not a matter of having them cease to exist, but merely engaging the process in your mind that edits out all of those extraneous details. Allowing us to acknowledge all the little things we need to edit out. Kind of like when you're at a party and you no longer wish to hear the hustle and bustle of the whole crowd and you tune out the details of it. Or when you're watching television and there's something that you want to focus on so completely that you don't acknowledge other things walking around in the room or other things going on around you. It 
is an important survival technique to be able to focus when you need to. And sometimes it helps spare all the unimportant details in our life that can be just edited out and cast aside. As you do this, your room becomes less and less interesting and your eyes slowly begin to go closed. I want you to visualize that light growing brighter and dimmer. Brighter and dimmer. Very good. Very good. And just like that, you can start acknowledging all of the little details about your body are starting to get tuned out as well. Starting at the fingertips and your toes. You don't need to focus on the temperature, the tactile sensation that comes along with your fingertips. All the nerve endings slowly going to sleep for a little while. Just so we can focus on the mental space that we're trying to attain. As you continue to relax, I want you to imagine that the pulsing light that you've been using to help control your breathing is now illuminating a pathway on the back of your eyelids. A path for us to walk along. I extend my hand to you, and we're going to make our way through this path. We don't need to be anywhere else right now. All that matters is that you are following along with me, and we are going to relax and slide into a very deep and receptive state of mind. Very good. Very good. As you continue to progress down, I'm going to be counting very slowly. Each number represents a few steps on this path as we make our way down towards our destination. A box that we may or may not have seen before. It is your box, made of your favorite material with your favorite lock. It is your subconscious that we are heading towards. Soon the path starts to form stairs, and I guide you to walk down it. One. Slowly we begin to take our steps. Two. There is no risk of us falling down these stairs. Three. Step by step, the gentle thumps that we associate with walking down these stairs are more of a mental conceptualization of such rather than an actual feeling that we have in our legs. Because as I continue to count... The feeling in your legs start to fade, and your hands, and your arms. They're not ceasing to exist, we're simply choosing to ignore them for now, so that we can focus on your mind. If you feel the need to rub or scratch, that's okay, you can still do that without disrupting what we're doing right now. Four, progressing deeper and deeper. Five. It becomes easier to let go of those things on the outside. Six. Your body continues to make its way down. You can almost imagine the box off in the distance. Seven. We're starting to see the bottom of these stairs. The light illuminating each time you inhale so that we see where we're going. It doesn't have to be a constant descent. We take a few steps when we inhale. And we pause when we exhale. Eight. We can see the bottom of these stairs now. Nine. We're at the last step, right before the box. All it would take is a gentle relinquishment. All that's left 
is for you to take one last deep breath and let go of everything before us so that we just have the mind to tend with. So that we just have the mind to attend to. And ten. Very good. Now that we are at this box, for those of you who are not familiar, this box is a representation of your subconscious. Everything that you are underneath is presented inside this box with a barrier like a membrane to protect it from extraneous stimuli that we don't really need so that we could choose what we filter so that we can process what we wish to and imbibe whatever information we wish to have inside of us to define us much like the membrane all around us that represents our skin or the surface of a pool of water. We are now going to open this box and make our way inside. But there is a lock on this box that will only open if you choose to come here, if you choose to go inside. When I count to ten, you will slip inside to the bottom of this box. The only difference in the fork of this path is do you wish to go under or do you wish to merely enjoy this moment? I'm going to count to ten now and you will slide into the box or you will wake depending on if you wish to allow me to go down into this box with you. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Nice and relaxed. Exactly where you wish to be. There you go. Now, the lid closes. And we are now inside this box. Take a moment to acknowledge that everything around you is whatever you wish for it to be. The box is a representation of your mental space. So we could be inside a dojo, or a library, or a cruise ship, wherever you feel is home to you. Now, when it comes to visualization, much of what we perceive as reality is merely just data that is processing through our minds. So much of the outside world is as we define it to be. That is why the human condition is so subjective. Because even when something is staring us right in the face, it is dependent on how we process that information. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make minor adjustments to this filtration system. I want you to imagine that there are five pipes coming from the edge of the box and into a large cauldron. This cauldron is the primordial soup that is our perception of reality. Sight, sound, smell, taste and touch all converge into this from five individual pipes that feed into this large vat. Some of these pipes are larger than others. <laughs> this is dependent on if sight, if visuals are an important aspect of your life, or if scent or taste are much more important to you. The idea is that some of these senses are stronger than others and therefore might be a little bit more difficult to fool. What we're going to do now is we're going to help you imagine that we're placing a filter over the entrances of these pipes. These filters are of memory and imagination. With memory and imagination, 
much of our experiences can be rekindled depending on if we have a wave of a sensation that's familiar to us. Think about the last time you smelled something very potent and it reminded you of something in your childhood. You suddenly felt the wave of memory wash over you. Or when you tasted something of some comfort food that reminded you of home or of the best memories you had in your life. What we're going to do is we're going to extrapolate this process, this means of filtration, and we're going to add things rather than subtract. So I want you to imagine that as we put the filters of memory and imagination over these large pipes that feed into this cauldron, we're going to help break down the thought process of being able to visualize. In order for you to feel this, to enjoy this, I'm going to be using a metaphor, a bit of a thought exercise for us to go through while we're down here. So I want you to pay close attention. Since this is a furry channel, I'm going to be using something that I've done with a couple of my furry clients. I want you to imagine taking your hand and moving the fingertips along your forearm. I know much of your body is asleep right now, but take a moment to perceive that. See, as the cauldron gets filled with this information, the sensation from touch begins to pour very naturally. Think about how the warmth passes between your fingertips and your forearm. How the skin might be smooth or a little rough. Maybe it has a little bit of hair on it. What matters is that you acknowledge the feeling. And that is just what is normally perceived when you touch your arm. Now I want you to take the memory of the first time that you pet an animal. It could be a dog, a cat, a frog, or a snake, or maybe even something aquatic like a dolphin or something. I want you to remember how that felt. Maybe their skin was very cool to the touch. Maybe it was a little wet. Maybe it was soft and warm. I also want you to remember the time that you ran your head through your hair. The feeling that you had when all those tiny little hair follicles were gently tugged at by your fingers. Now, I want you to use your imagination to stretch those two memories across your forearm. To give yourself the texture of that animal just on that forearm. And I want you to imagine rubbing your hand over it again, filtered by your imagination and your memory. After all, the information that might be coming from the nerve endings in your arm have to pass through your mind at some point. And there's nothing wrong with being able to filter what it is that you perceive, at least when it's in a safe environment. Take a moment to feel it. Really remember that sensation, the softness, supple, if you will. It is, it's a tactile sensation that perhaps over time you might be able to add the other senses to. Perhaps you might be able to smell what that texture felt like. Perhaps you might be able to get the smell of that feeling or a smell that you're looking for. Maybe you'll be able to see it. Maybe when you brush your hand over, you'll be able to hear the sound of fingertips running across fur or scales or whatever animal you decided to go with. Now, for those of you who have not felt it, that's okay. This is a very complex idea and it will take some time and practice to be able to accomplish it. Some of you might never be able to, and that's okay too. What matters is that you were willing to try. For those of you who did, I'm very proud of you, and I'm very excited for you. 
Because with this kind of visualization, it becomes easier and easier to slip back into the mind and imagine ourselves somewhere else. Perhaps if you want to be on an airship, or on a beach, or perceive yourself as something entirely other than human. Merely to see what it feels like. Now, with each of these filters going over all of your perceptions, it's not going to reduce how you perceive reality, and it's certainly not going to filter out things that would be dangerous. If at any point you need to slip out of this, it's very easy to. What you need to do is merely acknowledge that this information is stuff that you're tuning out, but your instincts do get the better of you from time to time if there's something that needs to be addressed. But with enough time, you might be able to perceive entire other worlds when we're in a moment like this. I recommend that when we wake, you probably give one of my visualizations a try. Maybe it might feel more real to you than it did before. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these filters here, in this cauldron here. I want you to think about how you can perceive reality and how you can filter th through with your memories and your imagination and allow yourself to be able to see the things you want to see, at least for a little while. It's not an alternative to reality, but sometimes we need to escape once in a while. I know this more than most. But for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice, deep breath, and I'm going to start counting back up to ten. I want you to remember this moment. Remember this feeling that you had when you were able to take control over all of your perception. You'll get better. I promise. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Thank you for listening.